On behalf of Overseer Vanessa Everett, we'd like to remind everyone that DJICC is standing on Psalm 91. We recommend that everyone follow the governmental orders to practice. Wash your hands. Only venture out when absolutely necessary. We are concerned about our elderly members, and although worship services have moved to a digital platform, we are determined to get the gospel to them via Zoom, Facebook, and email announcements. If you need any assistance, please call Elder Erica Adams at 201-774-2153 or Minister William White at 973-820-5585. Although the church doors are closed temporarily, we invite you to support the ministry with your tithes and offering via text to give at 551-258-8547 or online at djicc.org. Click give. God bless and keep you safe and healthy. God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Vanessa Everett, Deliverance Jesus is Coming Church. I'm honored to be with you on this day that the Lord hath made, and 
we will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to take a little time to share with you from the word of the Lord on today. And God has really impressed upon my heart as I was praying over what I would share. Of course, we're in the book of 1 Corinthians reading through for the month of March, 1 Corinthians. And we are getting an understanding of what our conduct and what our behavior as the people of God is supposed to be. But I'm going to deviate from that on today because of the issues that are are facing us and facing this world right now, our country and what is happening in other places is now coming over and visiting us and we need to be mindful of how we respond and react in it and how we, the people of God, the saints of God, the children of God, those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior are to walk. And then those who don't know Jesus Christ, what the wonderful opportunity is that they have to have Christ in their life to give them peace in a time like this. I want you to just think on these two words for a moment, fear or faith, fear or faith. I was in uh, my patio sitting this weekend. One evening, I happened to go to the videos from my husband's homegoing celebration. I guess I went there because during the course of the actual services, uh, there were times that I might have been sitting and zoned off in another place or my mind was off or just the point of not re really being able to accept what was taking place. People have been using the terms and saying, oh, I'm so strong. Believe it or not, I'm not that strong. It's God that's been keeping me. It's my faith in him who has held me up and kept me together. He says, I'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. And I really had to focus on keeping my mind on the Lord um, in order to keep myself together. When I would want to come apart, and I understand, and I've said this before, what I would, when I would want to come apart, it's only been the goodness and the grace of the Lord that has kept me. My husband and I experienced 52 years, five years dating, and then marrying, and for 47 years, lived a very happy life together. That doesn't mean that there weren't times that we didn't agree. Please don't get the story wrong. We're human, but because we loved each other and we put God first in our lives, we weathered the storms. We weathered the storms with laughs, things that we should have fallen apart over. Somehow it would turn into something that we could laugh at, come to agreements over, get through it because we were determined as children of God to love God and he blessed us with a wonderful life together. Tear. Okay. But here we are now in a different place, and I'm definitely in a different place uh, having to weather this storm, this coronavirus, this COVID-19, all of the different descriptions for the devil. And I got to understand and, and share with you how we need to be walking through this thing. We need to determine whether we're going to fear or whether we're going to allow our faith in God to give us victory at this time. And so as I was looking at one of those videos, I remember one evening, our brother in the Lord, Bishop Keith Young from Atlanta, Georgia, got up to give remarks. And he talked about the time that he traveled with Bishop Everett. He talked about the fact that they had gone on mission out of the country and uh, Bishop told him, you, you're going to preach. You're going to share the word, be prepared. He says he thought it was going to be just maybe one time at one church and it ended up being many times and sometimes all on the same day at many different churches. But he went and he did what the Lord called him the assignment that was given at that time. He preached. But at the end of his preaching, when they had some time left over before returning back to the States, 
they went on a little boat trip out into the ocean, beautiful blue waters, blue sky, whatever the case is. And he said he was hesitant. He was fearful because he couldn't swim. And he looked at Bishop and Bishop gave no signs of anything. Just we going fishing. We going out here on the boat, whatever the case was. And they went out on the boat, they got out in the ocean. And then the captain says, everybody's got to get off the boat. Bishop, uh, Bishop Keith said he looked at Bishop and said, you got to do something about this. Bishop told him, didn't say anything. And he said, no, Bishop, there's no joke. You got to do something. Now, Bishop Keith Young had on a life jacket, captain on the boat, but they're still saying, get off. And so after a while, they did something. They picked him up and threw him over into the water. He said, and when he landed in the water, they didn't tell him that they were on a reef, reef, which allowed them the ability to stand up in the middle of the ocean where it looked like they should be been in a sinking place and where he would be overcome by the water. And he said, and when he stood up, the water didn't even come up as high as his knees. And so here we are in uh, this pandemic, in the middle of all this trouble, people dying all around us. And we don't glory in the fact that any have lost their lives. We pray for those families. We pray for these countries that are experiencing massive, massive deaths, young and old. We pray for the hurting hearts and we pray for our country. We pray for government. We pray for those that have to make a decision in a time when it's hard to make a decision because this is an enemy. This is an enemy that we can't put our hands on. This is an enemy that we can't likely deal with fighting with a sword or fighting and killing with a gun but this is an enemy that's taking lives and creating fear, massive fear. But when I look at the saints and how we're dealing with it, we're at a position where we have to say, will we fear or will we have faith in God? When I look at Mark, the fourth chapter, verses 38, the scripture says, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Master, care not that we perish, the King James Version says. Jesus got up and he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, the disciples, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Here we have the disciples who walked with the Lord. They had just finished hearing him preach on land about faith because he was talking about the mustard seed. If just have a little bit, just, just a little bit as a grain of a mustard seed. And here they were in a position where they were with Jesus, the teacher, the master. And amidst all of that in the storm, they couldn't believe that God on board was enough to take care of any situation that was existing. The Bible tells us that the Lord is not willing. God is not willing that any should perish. Not willing that any should perish. And I know that many of you say, well, in this particular scripture, we're talking about the spiritual thing, the relationship with God, going to heaven or going to hell. Yeah, he's not willing that in that case, we should perish. He's not willing that we should perish. He wants us to be so connected to him and our lives be in line with living for him that he takes care of all the facets of our life. He did not set us up for destruction. He made a way of escape through Jesus Christ. But we have to understand that many folks just disregard his way of escape. His word tells us in Isaiah, the 41st chapter, verses 13, for I, the Lord thy God, will hold thee will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, fear not, because I'm going to help you. He tells us in his word, 
Don't be afraid. I'm going to help you. Proverbs 3, 25 and 26 says, Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. How many of you trust God in that fashion or to that point where you realize that everything that's happening in this world is not going to affect us in the same way? If your confidence, if your faith lies in God, you're not going to be affected in the same way that they are. Second Timothy 1 and 7 says, for God has not given us. Who are we? We're the children of God. He hasn't given us the spirit of fear. He gave us the spirit of power and of love and of a good mind, a sound mind. He keeps our mind in the midst of all of this happening. Now, let me show you. Let me just take a minute. I did a little looking up and Google. What does fear do in the, in the scientific or psychological evaluation of how fear affects people? Living under constant threat has serious health consequences. Physical health, fear weakens our immune system and can cause cardiovascular damage, gastrointestinal problems such as ulcers and irritable bowel syndrome and decreased fertility. It can lead to accelerated aging. I'm trying to stay young a little longer, y'all, so I can't fear. I, I, I'm trying to stay there. And even premature death. I told the saints a few days ago, a few weeks ago, I'm not rushing out of here. I love the Lord. I'm going to live for him. And when he calls, I want to be ready, but I'm not rushing the process. It drastically impacts your health, inability to relax. You ever be around people that they just can't sit still? They can't be relaxed. They can't be calm. Fear sometimes is the cause of those problems. It creates anxiety panic. It weakens, as I said earlier, your immune system. You can't fight off any sickness. Coronavirus. It sharpens survival instincts, puts us in a possible negative fight mode where because we're in the anxiety mode, because we're afraid, we go into fight mode where we need not fight. I found myself walking around in the supermarket smiling at people to put them at ease. You can't bump a shopping cart. You don't know how somebody's going to respond. Can't reach for something on a shelf that somebody else is reaching for. Desperately, fearfully, people are in fight mode. Some folks are in depression. They already thinking they're going to die and they're depressed, don't know when they're going, how they're going. God don't want us to live like that. It creates phobias. We think we got something that we don't have. We think we're sick when we're not sick. We don't know how to rebuke the enemy with the word of God. And God asks him to rebuke those sicknesses and diseases that are coming forth. It damages your heart. It depletes your confidence. It separates you and puts you in a position of missing out. Even though we're being told by the government and we're going to comply with what they tell us to do, that we're to shut in, there's other ways of communicating. There's other ways of creativity. There's other ways that we can make positive use of this time, even when others are fearing. It messes with your mind and your memory. And I don't need that to happen no more than it is because of the numbers on the birthday cake. But in all of that, we need to know not to fear. Fear thou not. I remember as a child hearing that song sung, and I know it comes from the word of God. Fear thou not, for I'll be with you. I will still thy pilot be. Never mind the tossing billows. Take my hand, hold on to God. And trust in me. First Peter, the third chapter, verses 12 through 14 says, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if you be a follower of that which is good? But, and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 23, and by now, those of us who are adults or the older 
legacy of people, the older of us that still exist, ought to know the 23rd Psalm. And shame on you who have not taken time to pass the word of God down to your children. Because when all else fails, the word of God shall stand. And it says in his word that we shouldn't fear because the Lord is our shepherd. Yea, though I walk through the valley, the fourth verse says, yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, what's going to happen? I will fear no evil. Why? Because the Lord is with me. Yes, he is. His rod and his staff, they're going to comfort me. They're going to fight for me. They're going to be a defense for me. They comfort me. He's going to prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. We have nothing to fear, those of us who trust the Lord. And all of you who have had an experience of learning God's word, reading God's word, learn to be confident in his word and trust and not fear. If you are one of God's children, one who is born again, washed and regenerated through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ, you have nothing at all to be fearful of. God takes care of his children. I'm one of his. How about you? We are not to fear. What are we to do? We're to have faith in God. If you can walk in faith in God, he can turn all of those negatives that I read about earlier, those things that cause us sickness and disease and, and not being able to relax, not having the confidence, not being able to focus, our mind coming apart, having phobias. He'll turn all of those things around and we'll know how to walk in the peace of God. His word says, in the midst of all that's going on around us, I can do all things, all things through Christ who strengthens us. Yes, he does. He, and the word of God says, and I thought this was awesome, in Psalm 118, verses 17 through 20, he says it in the King James Version, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Now, one other writer put it like this. The hand of God has turned the tide. The hand of God is raised in victory. The hand of God has turned the tide. He said, I didn't die. I lived. And now I'm telling the world what God did. God tested me. He pushed me hard, but he didn't hand me over to death. We're going to live in spite of this push that we're experiencing right now. If you can trust God, he'll take care of you. Be not dismayed, whatever betides. God's going to take care of you. He will be all that you need to keep you in perfect peace because you won't dwell on the things of the world. You will walk and practice walking in faith that God's got this too. Yes, he does. After sharing with the congregation last week to make preparation and go through some preparations on a on uh, shopping and getting things in place so that we don't be outside without having goods in. And I wasn't telling them to go out there and hoard up stuff. I was, ju I was just telling them, go out, get what you need, put it in the house. I got a text message from one of the saints who said, Pastor, I was doing just that. I was out shopping, trying to get my goods and trying to get things in the house. And she says she went to find some bleach and it was one of those days where the shelves were empty. No bleach, no, no sanitizing solutions to be found. She says, but as she continued to do her shopping, she happened to pass a shelf. And on that shelf, sitting back in an area where the bleach should not be, have been, was a bottle of bleach waiting for her. And she was able to take that bleach home with her that day. Look at how God will provide for his own. In the midst of confusion, nobody else's eyes saw that bleach but her. So she was able to walk out with the testimony, my God will provide. God makes a way out of no way. He takes the foolish things and confounds the wise. Yes, he does. What God has for you, even during this time, it is for you. What God intends for you to have, he's going to make sure that you have it. He's going to make sure that you have shelter. He's going to make sure that you're in good health. If you follow the instructions, we can't tempt the devil now. Don't be foolish. Don't go on the wise of, well, 
I can go out there because I'm one of his children and walk amongst all. Yes, he gives us promises to take care of us in awkward and bad situations, but we don't walk in foolishness and not be wise to take care of when we've been told to be be wise. When we've been told to stay in, not go out in the midst of all of this stuff around us, stay in, keep yourselves in. Do something else. Learn to enjoy your family. I've been getting those testimonies too. I've been getting the SOSs where parents are saying, help, they don't know what to do. Get online and find a game that you can play with your kids and something that you can do between work assignments. The people that belong to God live differently. Now listen to this. We live differently in the fact that we don't fear what's happening around us. We walk in faith, but we also don't fear death because our lives are sealed in Christ. And we know to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. In the fact that I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know if my next sneeze or my next sore throat is gonna be me, mean that I've got coronavirus. I'm not expecting to because I'm following the instructions, but I don't know who I've come in contact with and what tomorrow holds. But this I do know, that if the Lord should call me home, I'm going to be with him. I'm going to be in the resting place of God. I walk in that peace and I don't fear. I'm not going to fear in life and I'm not going to fear in death. I was out taking care of business this week. And those that were around me were a little hyper and nervous because it was taking so long for the business to be taken care of. And the gentleman kept coming back apologizing that it was taking long. I was told to be there at a certain time. I was there. I was told that the paperwork would be ready. It wasn't ready. I was told that all of the uh, inquiries that they needed to make before the business could be transacted would have been taken care of. But when I got there, none of that was ready. So I had to sit almost an hour and a half and they kept coming back and apologizing and apologizing i said it's okay i understand things happen the gentleman that was waiting on me actually made the statement to me well if i were you i would have been upset already he says i wouldn't be sitting here going through this and i said to him but on the inside i want to feel like that i want to respond like that but on the outside, I want my representation to be that that exhibits that of a Christian and one that has the love of God. So I'm not going to be upset with you at this moment. I'm just going to wait. I'm not saying that I'm all that. No, but God will give you a peace and a rest and allow you. I, I took that time to answer some of your text messages and emails and things that I needed to do. There's enough. If I had to do it at home, if I had to do it in somebody's office, I'll do whatever. But I'm not going to let the example that I put forth as a child of God be marred by bad behavior, negative behavior. And we're going to have to, at this time, when you walk through the supermarket, smile at somebody because they're thinking that that negative mode of fight has kicked in. They don't know when you're going to smile at them or when you're going to be ready to curse them or when you're going to be ready to kill them. So let the love of God and the peace that passes all understanding be yours through this trying time. The people of God live differently. The people of God love differently. The people of God act differently. The people of God walk in the protection that God provides. You walk in confidence. You walk in the fact that God says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So as you continue to reach out in relationship and prayer and reading the scriptures and having fulfillment in God's word so that he can fill your mind, he can fill your body, he can fill your whole being. This is what we walk in and we will not fear. As I sat in the hospital room with my husband on his last day, I could see him laying there looking up toward heaven, even with a ventilator and a hose down his throat, trying to give him breath. And I could see his lips talking to God. I couldn't hear the sound, 
because now he couldn't talk out loud. But his eyes were fixed on a place that wasn't in that room. And his words, if I couldn't hear him, his father could hear him. And I could see a smile on his face, which was awesome. It was unbelievable, if I could say that. Some wouldn't understand it. How could he smile with the pain that he was suffering? But he wasn't fixed on the pain. He wasn't focused on the pain. He knew that his heavenly father was calling him home and he was in the peace of God at that point. God will give you a peace whether it's in the midst of pain or whether it's in the midst of confusion or in a time of COVID-19 that passes all understanding. God will help you through that. I worked years ago in the VA hospital and during my time of working there, I worked on wards where people were transitioning from life to death. And I saw the difference in many that didn't know the Lord, how they fought for life, how they cursed, how they were unhappy, how they cried out for help, how they were in torment versus the few that might have been on the ward that were Christians and had the peace of where they were going from and going to was a far better place. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we do know who holds tomorrow. We don't know if we're going to see the end of this day. About now, it's it's noon for some, it's midnight for some. All around the world, different things are happening. But in those happenings, I would want to ask the question, do you know the Lord? Do you know him who is the peace giver? And do you know him who is peace? I preached that message a few months ago. I preached on peace. And when I preached on peace, I talked about the fact that God does not only give peace because he is the I am. And as the I am, he is peace. So everything that you need right now at this time on March the 22nd is wrapped up in knowing God. I'm going to ask you, do you know him as your personal savior? Have you asked him to come into your life? Have you asked him to forgive you of your sins? Have you asked him to make you his child? Because he takes care of his children. If you hadn't, if you haven't done so, it's your time now to say, Lord, I'm a sinner and I am sorry for my sins. I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life and is my ransom. I thank you that he gives life and he forgives sin. Forgive my sin, God, and change my life, and I'll live for you. Give me peace at this time of confusion, and I will serve you. Father, I thank you for this time of sharing. I thank you for those who have heard your word. I pray it has encouraged them to walk in faith. Walk in believing that you have all things under control. Take care of families. Give peace in their homes. Take care of those who are in hospital sick. Can't be even reached by family and others. But they can hear the word of God. Speak to their hearts in the name of Jesus. Take care of our government officials. And give them peace in their minds. Help them to trust you and look to you for direction. Those that believe you, give them a word to share with those that have no faith in you. God, touch those around this world that have been so impacted by this coronavirus. God, there are so many that we can't touch in the natural now. We can't put our hands on them, but you can. I pray even now in the name of Jesus that you would go to where they are, the saints, your people, and give them peace. Help them not to fear. God bless you at this time. We love you and we're praying for you.